to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. Join our various gaming groups as we play the 5th Edition of Dungeons & Dragons. And maybe just hang out and chat about gaming in general. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, assigned to Ragnarok Story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. It's, uh, introducing us to Jeff. Hola. Why, hello. Jim, Jeff. Jeff, Jim. <laughs> this is Jeff, one of Gunter's oldest friends. He's known for, yep. what was it, 27 years, you said? Yep, 27 years, back in back in the 90s, mid-90s. <clears throat> and, that's uh, funny, that's yeah. when I met Golda. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and I have been gaming together that long as well, because we met in a D&D game. Ah. Oh, now that is cool. Yeah, there was two games. There was, actually, it was a, a space game. And right. a and a superheroes game. That's right. It was GURPS, not D and D. My bad. Yeah, we had uh, GURPS Space, which was this. The uh, our GM was basing <laughs> a lot of what was going on off of whatever the latest episode of Babylon Five was. <laughs> Good source material there. Yeah, yeah but it was, it was, he, he forbade us from watching it. <laughs> Yeah, don't watch it because then we would know what the hell was going on. It because it wasn't like, oh, this was like several seasons. No, it was like whatever last week was. <laughs> <laughs> and one time he cribbed something from a uh, episode of uh, X Files, and uh, the 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 trick they had, you know, well we saw it, so we you know instead of it us taking like a good chunk of the evening trying to figure out what it was. No, we just went right to the, uh, the fact that it was a, uh, um, you know, rearranging the letters. <laughs> it's an anth- anagram, right? I think that's the yeah, one. It a, yeah, it was an anagram. And it was even, and it was also the same fucking anagram. <laughs> <laughs> that tells me your GM had a very busy week and you just got what you got that week. No, 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 no. That was like every, no. and he was like, <laughs> he he worked at a at a comic book store. The Alex did not have that much going on. <laughs> I can see it now. You're sitting at the store and you're hearing some people talking about some stuff, and you're like, "Ooh, that's a great idea. Write that down." Two yeah. days later, damn, that was a great idea. I wish I wrote it down because I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> So since I have y'all here and we haven't started yet, why Jeff has Gunter yes. told you what RPG a day is? No. I'm so not, I'm not even sure I know what RPG is. What? Uh-huh. I thought for sure you'd be following along last year for this one. So RPG a day, which in this case is RPG a day 2022, is a daily prompt dealio that some gamers and bloggers came up with nine years ago. And every August they come out with a new list of prompts for you to go ahead and each day talk about something in a blog, vlog, social media post, or something that celebrates positivity in our favorite pastime, which is RPGs, because obviously we all like RPGs here, right? Mm -hmm. I should hope so. (laughs) And and we're not talking about the rocket-propelled grenades here. (laughs) Awkward! RPGs? I came for the grenades! (laughs) Now that would be my droid! (laughs) Her droid BT is all about blowing shit up. Oh, yeah. I've heard. 
<laughs> so uh, today is August the 2nd, and the prompt for the day is, what is a great introductory RPG? Because the beauty with RPG Day is it's uh, RPG non-specific, so that way it's not just one RPG or another. Well, you're gonna know you're gonna know which ones I'm gonna say. I'm I I very much like the uh, um the journey the, the fifth editions, uh D and D fifth edition. I think especially the whole kit that came out with the whole Minds of Fendelver dungeon. Um, I think was really good for introducing. But the Star Wars RPG, I think they really came out with a nice introductory way to introduce. Um, their game system, because if you get those initial kits, I mean, it even shows how to level the character um, in their in their little pamphlets that, OK, this is what this character starts out with. Then you flip the page and you see, oh, well, as they gain experience, this is the things that they can do. So I feel like the way both of those handle uh, um, introducing new players. That, that's a that's good point. Mine. The. Uh... Mainly the Edge of Empire one, I think, is the best of the intro mm-hmm. Star Wars groups. Cause yeah. The Age of Rebellion is my next favorite, which con- coincidentally, the base you're fighting on in this map is totally the map from the Age of Re- Rebellion starter set. Just going to totally throw that out there, by the way. <laughs> which is a fun little adventure where your rebels are breaking into an Imperial base. Totally not doing what you guys are doing. No, no. No. And uh, the nice thing, you know, because I'll totally throw out a great introductory RPG is the totally agree with the Star Wars ones, because a lot of folks have a hard time getting into the, the, the Star Wars narrative dice, which, Jeff, you'll totally see they're super confusing, but they make total sense after you've played once or twice because mm-hmm. they use symbols <clears throat> instead of numbers. And then yeah. you can spend advantage and disadvantage in fun and interesting ways. Yes. Yeah, I was... Uh... Uh, Gundori sent me the PDF, so I was flipping through them just to get an idea of how it works. Very nice. And did you send him the cheat sheet? Oh, I did not send him the cheat sheet because I hardly pull it up myself anymore. I didn't even think of it. <laughs> see, see how good he is? He doesn't need the cheat sheet on how to spend extra threats and advantage. He's just <laughs> like, I got this. I can come up with cool narrative shit on my own. But uh, to back to what I was going to pick for the introductory RPG is the Edge of Empire starter set, because not only as, as introductory sets go, it comes with maps, fully fledged character pamphlets that have everything yep. you need to run, as mm-hmm. well as back when Fantasy Flight Games ran it before Edge Studios now runs it, they had a free second chapter to the adventure. So you could go online, download the PDF and keep the story going. And, of course, the cool thing with the Edge of Empire book is in Edge of Empire, when you play that setting for Star Wars, the group picks a ship that's the group ship. In the starter set, you end up stealing a Trandoshan's bounty hunter ship. And it's funny because if you play the second chapter of the adventure, problems with the ship are part of the adventure. Like one of them is there's, you know, a nasty Wookiee carpet stinking up the place <laughs> another one is the place has trandoshan pheromones Damn, trandoshan decorators <laughs> so you got to clean the ship up you know and you got to hack some of the stuff so it has a little secondary level to you don't just get your ship you actually earn your ship yeah and of course you actually get some really good tokens in all the starter sets my least favorite starter set of all the star wars ones is the force and uh is the Rise of God, the, the one that basically set for the new prequels. I mean, the yeah. new sequel, the trio, because it has the weakest storyline of them all. Basically, you're on Jakar and you find some nomads and you find a fallen Star Destroyer and you claim the stuff that's there. But then Captain Phasma and company shows up and arrests you or hires you, depending on how the group plays it. And I'm like, that that adventure is kind of weak sauce. However, if uh, you play the Rebel one, the cool thing is you take over the Imperial base and you can decide whether to keep it or leave because it is clearly written out for the newbie GM and the great little tips there that the moth that runs this place has wants nothing to do with it once it's failed. Because it's basically an illegal listening post to listen to other moths. 
And they once, don't do that, no. And once the rebels take the base, everybody knows it. And so, <clears throat> Jim, just want to point out that Dave is on. So, Dave, my buddy Jeff, Jeff, my buddy Dave. Howdy. <clears throat> um, just a short, short background, which I already shared with Jim and Kelly, is that Jeff and I have known each other for as long as I've been here in Tucson, pretty much uh, 27 years. And we've been gaming together just as long. So he Very is cool. a, a they met gaming RPGer, uh, new to the Star Wars system, but uh, has played plenty of D and D, Pathfinder, and other systems. Um, well, yeah. sorry to get you addicted to another one. <laughs> you too much. It's so hard to do with us RPGers, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the best part is once you start playing this, not only are you getting a Star Wars fix, but the dice system is really nice. I'm just going to throw that yeah. out there. It can is. never be it stated is. enough. It's a really nice dice system. Yeah. yeah. I was actually, um, I was earlier tonight, I was on a uh, uh, Discord channel with some of my um, MMO buddies. And I told them that I was, you know, jumping off to go play a Star Wars game and <clears throat> they got interested, and I started telling uh, telling them about that beautiful roll I made last week, <laughs> <laughs> explaining the uh, the dice system. And one of the guys uh, is clearly an RPGer because he you know he understood it right away. And he's like, "Oh, that sounds really awesome. I'm going to have to check that out." Because he really liked that idea that you can spend advantages and triumphs and do something unique within the story. It's not just strictly numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hate to say, yeah, it's uh, probably one of my favorite uh, dice systems. And I've been playing RPGs longer than you two have known each other by several years. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> tell me the odds. <laughs> you lie, you're a spring chicken. <laughs> yeah. Mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've so, been actually playing games that, uh, since uh, I guess it would have been like 82. So Yeah, I want to say early 90s myself, like right around 90, actually. Yeah. Oh, my God. I've been playing longer than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not, you know, um, uh, Dave, I, I don't know. Uh, um, Dave might have been. I'm like. It was about seventy nine, eighty for me. Yeah, right around eighty ish. Yeah. D so, box, D and D box set. Really <laughs> sorry to throw this out there, but seventy nine, eighty, I would have been three or four. <laughs> well, no excuse, Gunter. Numbers. <laughs> you were old enough to choke on the dice. I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> and hey, and those dice were like brutal. They had the super sharp edges, yeah, and you had to taste, use the crayon to. But they, I was gonna say they tasted good. They had crayon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you could suck on. Them. Well, you had to do the crane yourself, so Mm -hmm. not all of them had it. (laughs) You're like, what did I roll? I can't see it. (laughs) The box that came with the dice and a crayon. I know, but if you lost the crayon. Yeah. So, hey, Jim, you're going to have to add Jeff to the uh, the game because I I do not have admin privileges on Roll20 for this game. So, Jeff, what type of character do you want to play? Um, I've been thinking that I'm going to, you know, a nice evil Wookiee sounds like it would be a, a good, a good mi- match here. Oh, mm, nice. evil Wookiee. Yes. Nice. I'm like, did you, did you add Jeff to the Facebook conversation? Yeah, no. Okay. Then, uh, <laughs> copy, paste, and send this his way. I mean, why would you do something like that? <laughs> That's just crazy talk. Because I'm busy getting them connected to the Skype call. <laughs> what? Can't expect me to do everything. Yes, we can. Do everything. All right. Well, you get him added to the game. I will send him the Facebook group. <laughs> so you're looking hey like guys, a, welcome like to a the... uh, melee-ish type or something, or range type, or... No, he's... <laughs> I'm figuring, you know, some of the, the classics. I figure he'll have a bowcaster and be a good brawler, but also 
be like you know mechanically inclined. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good because my mechanics is okay, but it's not that high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think I had the highest mechanics. I'm pretty sure you did. Yes. Yeah. And speaking as a droid, having someone with really good mechanics would not, <laughs> you know, would not be a, a bad thing per se. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so to pull you back on topic real quick, does anyone else have anything to throw into RPG Day 2022 before I stop recording for that? Oh, I was going to think that you know that a good uh, introductory introductory uh, scenario. Just you know, send them into Tomb of Horrors. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>, no! <laughs> and that's how people stop playing games, right? <laughs> I mean, it Bring... was designed as a dungeon kill or a killer dungeon, yeah, so, mm-hmm. party killer, so dungeon. So, <sighs> you know, one of my first hardcore DMs, which is like the third DM I played with, you regularly showed up to his games with three character sheets in hand. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, I don't approve of murder gems. I mean, death, it, no problem. I mean, I, I get it. You know, death has to occur. But when they set out to kill, that, yeah. that I don't like so much. Yep, yep. Yeah, the, uh, but in terms of what's good introduction, I've generally found that as long as everyone's is into the genre, uh, it generally works out pretty good. I've, uh, you know, I've pe- tried to get people into like a space game, but they, you know, were all into, you know, fantasy and just weren't. They they couldn't really get the the spacisms, and mm-hmm. yeah, it, it didn't go over well. But uh, you know, good enthusiasm, good good enthusiasm for the genre can mask even a bad system. A, a really great system, but you're not into the genre, it's still not going to do it. Yeah, yeah no, that, that is... That I've like been tr- there. Trying to, like trying to get into Boot Hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which was a Western well, RPG way back in the day. I, I, Deadlands is fun, though. <laughs> Actually, I have to say that I think as far as uh, introductory RPGs go... That GURPS was a pretty easy system to pick up and learn and dive in, and it had a lot of fl- flexibility in terms of what genre you were playing in. But then you had character creation, and that's where it got crunchy. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it could be. It depends on on that. One that I was uh, enjoying. Uh, not many people play it, but Fudge. Oh it, uh, yes, Fudge and Fate. I've never played. Oh, Fate. Okay, yes, I have yep. played. Fate dice. Yeah, no I like kidding. Fate. They actually yeah. made a third edition of Boot Hill back in 2018. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I well, just see, had to go look for it to see if there was even a reference of it or if it just disappeared. But, <laughs> wow. We'll, we'll yeah. see. To tag on Jeff's idea, all your players come to show up to play, you know, Western, and then you throw them into Star Wars, and now you have Space Western. Well, exactly. Yeah, and Star it's, Wars. <laughs> Uh, I was going to go with the Firefly angle, but same, same. Spaghetti Space Western. <laughs> yep. I was actually going to go with that movie with uh, Daniel Craig that I can't think of the name of right now, but Cowboys <laughs> and Aliens. Uh. Oh. Cowboys and Aliens. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Boot Hill and just, or, you know, it'd be an interesting one to you know, bring in Gamma, Gamma World. Gamma World, the original <laughs> Gamma World. Yeah. Original oh, yeah. Gamma World and, and Boot Hill together. <laughs> oh my God, those mutant charts were could be brutal. Yep. My uh, it was my sister who rolled a mutated owl that was had a uh, uh, fear of the dark. Good God. <laughs> I'm like it would because you know those rolls could just totally screw you. <laughs> <laughs> we're like what? <laughs> yeah, but I ran a, a fudge campaign and the, it's. The hardest part of character creation is just, you know, making sure you nail what your actual concept is. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've known too many people who, are, who don't come up with a concept until they've, you know, rolled their six 3D6s and, you know, okay, well, all right, I've got a, this, you know, a high int and a, 
low decks. All right, I guess I'm. I guess I'll be a, a, a mage. You know, they work at it that way. Whereas with fudge, you really have to know ahead of time. Okay, this is what I want to do, and then you know, how do I how do I describe that in 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 a game mechanical way? And get the fudge being so loose in its uh in, with, with really really broad uh categories mm-hmm. and it's basically you need to you know you need a skill name a skill that, that's now a skill yeah and the aspects that you can mm-hmm. draw upon with them and stuff with fate dice that's cool so that you yep. can get other yeah jim we'd been trying to do like a i don't know if you've ever played dresden uh, which is a fake game system based off of the Harry Dresden books. Cool. But that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, they do a great job of uh, in the storytelling aspect for Dresden is before you make any characters, you build the city. So everybody picks a face, what the faces aspects are. So that way, you know, like the big bad, the big good, you know, you you know what's going on in town before you make your first character. Yeah, everyone cooperates to create the environs. It's totally your GM's favorite setting to play in ever because the players do most of the work. Yeah, they do that like for the setup and stuff. It, it's really awesome. We'd actually tried to do a Dresden by Gaslight kind of thing, you know, but that one never took off. Yep, Dresden Files in Victorian London. How can that go bad? So if you scroll up on the Tuesday Star Wars, there's a uh, app.roll20.net link. And if you click that, it should automatically let you in the lobby. Yeah, I'm here. I am here. I had uh, Roll20 up. Something deep. Right, and I heard a ding. I heard a ding. I should actually, you know, Mm -hmm. launch the page. Yeah, I'm in there. Yeah. Our pilot. And now we start the stream. And did we tell him we stream <laughs> these episodes, by the way? Oh, <laughs> did you neglect to tell him that? <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time somebody's neglected to tell somebody and invited a player. I'm just saying. Um, I I believe isn't um, Gunter isn't your character technically the pilot? Although I'm also I'm a a backup pilot. Yes, I Gunter is a... the space pilot. Our dro- yeah. astromech is the, the planetary, planetary pilot. pilot. And jetpack pilot. Because I, have... I got jetpacks! I have okay. five green, one yellow in space piloting, and six green in uh, planetary piloting. Okay, and, okay uh, he's the pilot, period. <laughs> yeah, and astrogation, does that uh, fit your... Astrogation. <laughs> My astrogation is two green. Okay, well, apparently then... I'm three green for astrogation. Um, anyone got a higher? Uh, yeah, no. Apparently, I'm the astrogator. You're all yeah. doomed. <laughs> yeah. We're doomed. We're doomed. Thank you for listening to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition, a member of the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Please follow us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash CPPN to never miss a show or stream. So, Jeff, are you in the lobby and do you see a big base with a bunch of people with X's through their faces? I do. As I say, it shows he's in the lobby. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure. So, uh, just to give you a brief overview, this is the uh, Naboo planetary security base that the uh, evil group has invaded. I mean, the professional Sith criminals... Bad guys. Criminals. All matter of pers- entrepreneurs. They managed to exactly. climb up the plateau here unseen. They sabotage the generators that in like 10 minutes are going to be powering down and something good and something bad's happening. And then they snuck in through this little door. And it's all- booby trapped. Super <laughs> duper, super. Sne- oh, yeah. They put a grenade inside the panel. So when someone goes to fix the generator, blows up. Then they snuck around here, realized there was a bunch of Naboo soldiers being assholes in here because these guys are really not professional troops. There's a bunch of folks eating in here. Then they snuck around here. 
Then they found out there's a couple uh, officers over here discussing, you know, personnel choices for the future. There's the armory right here. And then they snuck around this way. And then our nefarious group managed to sneak super, super stealthy into the communications room. Our droid BT threw a grenade at these guys <laughs> bitty, and blew bitty. them to crap. After they closed the door, which conveniently, thanks to Triumph, was soundproof, because it is the communications room. That's how the players justified it. And then our sniper shot this guy, and the bullet ricocheted into the machinery, killing all the guys on the communications headphones. Yeah, Gunter gave me a rundown of... <laughs> Before saying, hey, you want to join this game? Yeah, he gave me that, yeah. <laughs> how, the, how the, uh, the last Tuesday went. So since this is a good time to recant, let's go over what our players are. So Kopesh, you're first. I am a kind of fallen Sith Lord or Sith Knight, but it kind of disappeared and faked his death and is now operating a, a special team that takes jobs for Sith Lords and moths and things that need things done quietly <laughs> and on the down low. <laughs> Whether that be other Sith or other or Jedi or whatever. I I mean the best thing is is he's Sith adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Bothan, but my outfit kind of masks exactly what I am so people don't as far as they know, my original person is not any longer alive, and I'm, all I'm known as is Kopesh. Nobody knows my true identity except for my crew. Okay. Now, I'll totally say BT, you're next. <laughs> BD, BD. Um, I am a uh, former military Blastromech, uh, basically a murder bot. Um, I haven't been wiped in a while, so I'm a bit twitchy. I very, very much enjoy thinking things go boom! Um, and uh, now, of course, I uh, specialize in wet work and sabotage with a team and an employee of the Sith. <laughs> 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 that, you know, it, it allows me to do, you know, it's the, it's the little things in, in life, you know. I get to blow shit up, and it, it, it makes me very, very, very happy. All the pretty colors. It warms her circuits. It does. <laughs> As do the explosions. The heat. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> on the plus side, she has the gift for not blowing herself up when she drops an explosive on her spot. <laughs> it's an important skill to have. Yep. Yes. And that leads us to Kopesh. Or no, Grix. Like Grix. Grix. So Grix is a human from Ord Mantell who at a very young age was conscripted into this lawless planet, what passed for an army. He was trained up as a sniper, sniper very much disenfranchised with the whole thing, especially when the Jedi were supposed to show up on planet to help um, bring some law and order to things, but never did so. And their army was uh, kind of like in Firefly. They lost the war and uh, he ended up, you know, your brown coat just out doing his own thing. And that, gave, you know, made him disgusted with the Jedi. And so he uh, he teamed up with these this uh, Sith and he actually during the war uh, at one point, crossed paths with and befriended Bitty Bitty. <laughs> so they, they he didn't a, leave me behind, and that means a lot to me. Right. So um, similarly, uh, I have my duties are um, sabotage and um, whatever the other one was. <laughs> what work and sabotage? What, what a coincidence! Yeah, what, so am I. Yep. I sense I a think, theme with these guys. <laughs> kind of a focused uh, theme. You yeah. had also selected wet work and sabotage, didn't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I forgot to add the. I got uh, wet works, but yeah, I haven't added the sabotage. So yeah, we. 
<laughs> Perhaps that is what bonded us all together. <laughs>